Hello and welcome to Law and Order S Review here on Fanversation. I'm Yell Teagle. I'm joined by Taylor Gates. Hello, Taylor. Hello. Hello. Um, today we are talking season 24, episode 5, Breakwater. Breakwater. Um, that is the name of this episode. If you are new here, welcome to our show. Uh, if you are not new, welcome back. We like having you here. Um, let me first let you know that if you are in a situation you need help, if you need to talk to somebody, please reach out to Rain. Their number is 1-800-656-4673. 1-800-656-4673. Taylor, what does that spell? It spells hope, everyone. It does spell hope. Um, and if you've never watched our show before, consider this your content warning because I guarantee Taylor says something offensive this week. Whoa, maybe. <laughs> um, that was a challenge more so than like a calling you out. I challenge you to say something offensive. Oh um, that's well, right. I'll my best for you. On shows, uh, on shows like this where people are assaulted, that's a serious thing. But on shows like this where we sit from our own homes and talk shit about the show, shit comes out of our mouths. So consider this your content warning. Yeah, I miss, I miss the dun-dun sounds. Dun-dun. I'll do yeah. it. Thank you. We, I got to figure out. Thanks. Yeah. We got to figure something out. Anyway, um, this is, again, Season 24, Episode 5, Breakwater. Uh, here is the quick cap. A young man asks the SVU for help when he suspects his boss is preying on his sister. Velasco tries to convince a reluctant witness to testify in court. Taylor, tell me, how did you feel about this episode breakwater it was fine but i got a little bored during it i was like okay this is gonna happen this is gonna happen it was just very much like straightforward the only thing i was surprised i mean i was surprised a few times but it was like very quick like the fact that he was the one assaulted instead of his sister i was like okay that's a promising start and then it got super boring after that in my opinion like i I will say, I thought he committed suicide in the water at first. And oh. I, I, I was, uh, it was interesting to find out that he didn't, but I really thought there was, that was going to be a twist. But uh, I was just like, okay, now this is going to happen. This is going to happen. Like, I knew exactly where it was going to go, pretty much. And if I didn't, I was like, okay, well, I'm not that invested. <laughs> so, I, that's so mean. It was fine, but there was nothing bad about it. It just like didn't wow me. Um, here's the thing. I disagree. I really like this episode. I had a good time. To be fair, though, I think on first viewing, I also was bored. There was definitely um, the reveal that he was raped and not his sister. I definitely shouted twist. Um, yeah. That that was a fun surprise. Uh, weird statement to say. That was a fun surprise. And um, I on second viewing. I really enjoyed this episode a lot more. I found it much more amusing and entertaining. Um, we have some uh, some returning repeat offenders. But first, um, I will say, and I believe I'm correct on this, so I will I welcome the correction if I am wrong. This is the first episode about lifeguards that we've ever had. Um. Wow, I was going to say, I was going to try to do that for the poll, but I was like, I don't think there are any. <laughs> like, yeah, this is the first episode about lifeguards, and I think that is fascinating. I do um, have to say, like, I was really, um, I feel bad because when they were training, they were taking it so serious. And, like, I have friends who were lifeguards in college, and all they did was just sit and chill, and it really wasn't that serious or deep for them. So I was like, okay, you guys are taking this really seriously. And then I was, like, felt bad because obviously it actually was serious, especially if you're doing it at these, like, really big pools or at the beach. But I was just like, okay, is it that deep? But it so, was. It so wasn't that deep, pun in <laughs> Um, but I just I have to say I had I felt bad because I was a bit um uh, dismissive, elated, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'll say this. I I was fascinated by this concept that he's like someone important in the in local government. And so upon rewatch, I ha I heard 
things that I missed the first time. First of all, like this is a department within Parks and Recreation. I didn't realize that this was like a government position. I didn't realize that lifeguards were like, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Literally this episode should have been called Baywatch because it essentially was like, hey, this is how the the Baywatch, the watch of the Bay works. Yeah. Like this is this is who employs them and all that. And you know, if you if you've seen the Baywatch film as many times as I have, I'm I not ashamed. <laughs> but I respect that. I love Thank that. Thank you. Yeah. Listen, it's a it's like the show, beautiful people in bathing suits. So I've that seen is it. All you need. Everyone right. was hating on the new Jurassic Park. Why? Who cares? It's hot people and they're running with dinosaurs. Like, <laughs> do you need anything else? Like sometimes that's enough, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I now know so much about how lifeguarding works, um, but I learned even more about how it works in New York, allegedly, uh, based on the show. Um, so let me give some actor shout outs and then we'll give some live chat shout outs because we have people chatting it up in the live chat. Um, so uh, our Paul Greco, um, the Geico Greco is what I want to call him, uh, is, <laughs> you heard me, is played by James uh Carpinello who is a repeat offender that you might recognize from Pop Okay was he who was he in Pop I believe he is the the um I think he's either the stepdad hmm. no or the one whose kid died before that like leads oh, us to the family. Okay okay oh, okay Yeah based on this image that I'm literally just gonna share screen because why not? Uh, share screen, Windows. There we go. Um, I think he is the the dad of the kid or the uncle or whatever of the kid who dies that like leads us okay. to the um, fighting. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's a fun repeat offender. Um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Damian Diaz who played Diego. Really great job. And Samantha. Um, Buscarino who played Martina's sister also fantastic job um, Sam Wolf who played uh, Volpe Ronnie Volpe and then Sol Romo who played Daniela like really amazing performances from everybody but I have to point this out because it drove me crazy um, Pinsky was played by an actor named Kevin Toms Kevin Toms is a repeat offender as well Nice. Kevin Toms was previously in season uh hold on this is from 2004 season five episode 16 home which is the episode where a little boy is digging through the trash because he wants food and then we find out that he lives in a home where his mom is like very strict on what he can and can't eat and like there's no abuse or whatever and then his his older brother kills him um because the cops are going to take them away and it turns out that she claims that their oldest sibling was taken away and put in foster care and murdered anyway he plays this hidden older son so Ooh, in 2004 this man played someone who was about 19 <laughs> the year is 2022 he is playing someone in his early 20s the man is in his mid 40s i'm kind of obsessed with that actually good for him it's giving good for him giving cwt <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> genuinely, I'm like watching this the second time and there's the close up shot where he's explaining like how um, Greco has the pictures of him. And I'm looking at this man going, this man is not in his 20s. This man is not in his 20s. I thought he was in his 30s. <laughs> he's in his mid 40s, guys. That's incredible. Good for him. Uh, Keep it going as long as you can, man. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. I, this is, I'm not, there's no shame in this. I'm just impressed. That's hysterical. Yeah. That's amazing. Actually. <laughs> um, I want to give some shout outs to people who are live in our chat. Uh, Lizette is here. Hello, Lizette. Um, Zach is here. Daryl is here. Hello, Zach and Daryl. Thank you guys for being here. Um, Lizette points <laughs> out <laughs> who needs a good That's what plot. I'm saying, Lizette. That is what I'm saying. Right. I mean, if, ever, if it's enjoyable to look at, Gets you a lot what does it matter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk about the actual episode a little bit, right? Because uh, I almost felt like this was ripped from the headline of the gymnastics coach, the like Olympic gymnastics coach. Mm -hmm. 
but not. Yeah, because it wasn't, I don't know, like the elite sport type. I, I thought that's where it was going to go too, but then it kind of took a different turn. Right. Um, it, I did enjoy the like Carisi of it all, right? That we ended up with him like, how is he going to win this case? Pivoting the crime. Um, I think that yeah. was super interesting. Yeah, I like that too because they couldn't get him on this. So they're like, fine. <laughs> then, then you killed 10 people then. But yeah, I was like, okay, well, that works too. Because I think that, I mean, the idea of the idea of like Daniela, right, talking about how she was like, I have no, what was it? I have no business being a lifeguard. Well, anyway, that was a lie because yeah. it was so funny. Just like, because I didn't realize they were going to dig into that. So I was like, what a weird, like, what a weird little plot point. What a weird thing to say. And then it ended up mattering. But in the moment, I thought it was really funny. I mean, my thought was, the oh, wow, okay. why? why are you there? Right, so, why did you, yeah. It like it was confusing me most of the episode the first time that like they kept being like it's a good job it's good money and I was like in what world is that good money and then I realized it's good money for a 19 year old like it's good yeah. money compared to what you can do while you haven't finished college and, and like oh that it took me until second viewing to understand because they kept being like it's good money I don't think it is. Well, didn't they say it's like double other lifeguard salaries too? Though? It's no, it's double the salary that they would get. I think that they were trying to, and I maybe I misunderstand it, but I think they're trying to say like this is more money than you'd make doing something you can do without a college degree. So like, like a fast food rest. job, restaurant, yeah. um, retail, like it's double that, which is not good money. Like that's not. If it's double that, I would say it's pretty good money. What's the minimum wage in New York? Like $15 now? I don't think it is. I think it's still shitty like everyone else. Well, still um, the difference between $7.25 and $15 and hour. Like that's a lot. But double $7.25 is not a good job. $15 an hour is like not the worst ever. Um, Daryl says, I think they said it's double a teen type job. That's what we're saying, right? So like it's yeah. if you work retail. Double the minimum wage anywhere, though, is a huge that's is, yeah, but that's how much minimum wage should be. Like, that's what I know. I live in a very expensive city in a very expensive state. So, like, just trying to live on that is not possible. But what, then is, again, what is the minimum in New York? Uh, internet? Let's find out. Because right. when I was worked in Indiana, it was $7.25. And if I would have gotten $14.50 in Indiana, I would be making bank if I was young. Okay, so... Uh, currently it is, I don't know, but as of the end of this year, it will become fourteen twenty an hour. In, in Dude, $28 an hour. That's pretty good. I'd be a lifeguard. <laughs> Give me in Lizette, the pool. Lizette found the same thing I did. Um, yeah. that is starting at the end of the year, fourteen twenty. Um, what? so yes, that is sure. <laughs> but in New York. I don't think that gives you enough to, like, I, I still think you can't, like, live on that. You can't fall out, but you could scrape and get. It depends on your circumstances. Sure. And I, to be fair, like, they pointed out that these were all um, children or, or young people from um, uh, low income ho homes. Uh, Daryl says that's balling. That's what I'm saying. I was like, I'd be balling with that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Half seven dollars or double seven dollars is not. Oh, but double fourteen twenty. That's, sure. that's pretty. That's pretty good. Anyway, um. <laughs> anyway, we <educate laughs> guys on the minimum wage. You're welcome. <laughs> what um, a digit. Oh, um, um, <laughs> so I guess, uh, friends, you may want to go learn to swim. Is what I guess we learned. Because that was the other thing. Is I was like. Is this a secret that no one knew that lifeguards make good money? Like, whoa, that's what I was saying. I almost I love being in the pool. To this, but I didn't. You should I have. Theme. <laughs> I considered it for half a second, and then I was like, "You will hate yourself full time." Don't it's so that. funny because if you had been like, "Hey, why don't we wear bathing suits to this?" I'd be like, "Let's do it." Oh my god. Um. Well, you know, I would have another lifeguard. <laughs> Um, I love a uh, themed dress up. I do too, but that seems a little, it's October, it's like almost November. Like, it's Halloween. 
<laughs> Why not? Well, we should have dressed up in Halloween outfits, but alas. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let's talk about this, like, um, Greco's uh, punishment for Diego of swimming laps. Um, I When Muncie is like, at least Benson doesn't make us do that. I was <laughs> like, should I start doing that? Is, should laps, not like swimming, but running laps be my punishment to my students? <laughs> No, that's awful. Maybe they should be less shitty. My question, though, is if that's the punishment, then he's not doing his job. Then he's swimming laps. Like, yeah. What shouldn't he be like on the chair looking out at? I, I don't know. I was just like, that doesn't, that seems very counterintuitive. He's on the clock, not paying attention to swim <laughs> laps. I feel like. like- Wrong. that's so funny i feel like was the idea to make him throw up like was that it? he's hung over so because you know like when they when you exercise after being hung over you'll probably throw up i was in my mind it was like oh the water's cold so it's like not pleasurable but it, maybe the water wouldn't be but like when does this take place it must be october right because doesn't the show go pretty close to the what month we're actually in what about so that water is going to be chilly. It's going to be frigid. Yeah. But like they said, it'll sober him up. That's what I'm saying. That's what my thing was. Like, uh, oh, it's cold. It's going to like snap him. You know, it just seemed. Shower. It seemed stupid. Um, sure, it was stupid. It was to kill him. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying punishment wise, not to murder someone, but punishment wise. Sure. But I guess mean, what? That wasn't what it was. I know. But punishment wise, I would have done something like that no one wanted to do. You know what I mean? Like laundry, every, wash everybody's yeah. swimwear, clean out the pool, something gross. Yeah. Also, but- if he's being punished, why is he at the the like reward spot, which is the beach? Is that the reward spot? Yeah, because that was anyone who slept with Greco got a gig at oh, the beach. Oh, yeah. Because that was like the, because so because we're in California, I forget that indoor pools are a thing. Yeah, and so I every time I'm in an indoor pool, I'm like, "This is gross, and it smells, and I hate it." And I forget that like that's a thing everywhere else. It sure is. I'm very used to indoor pools not being from California, um, but yes, I assumed that it was cold and supposed to like sober him up because the water was like chilly. Yeah. Well, but maybe he was supposed to bomb. We don't know. But he was supposed to die, regardless. That's the right. actual moral of the story was. Yes. <laughs> Don't go in under any circumstances. Um, I I wrote I wrote this line because it made me laugh. Um, and it was when Pinsky's explaining. And he says, I understand that I have a duty to act, but I stepped in. I observed that the conditions had changed. Uh, there was now a rip current. I feared for my life and safety. And it made me think of the line that cops say when they shoot somebody is like, I I feared for my life and safety. Like, I feared for myself and my team or whatever they say. Right. If there's a rip current, are you still, you don't have a duty to go in there? Is that not your whole job? Like, Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then when, when Greco on the stand was like, people out in the water are stupid. <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa. Dude, then maybe instead of like, you know, guarding and, and saving people, you guys should stand there and be like, don't go in. It comes to an IQ thing. So shut up. Like, shut up. Maybe you need a few IQ points. Yes. Um, Daryl says, uh, he was working there, though I assume he was already uh, ros- already rostered on Except before you. Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense because he showed up late. Ugh, makes Brandon. sense. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think what was interesting and that wasn't really, not necessarily addressed, but like the fact that Greco, um, <coughs> sorry, the, the fact that Greco assaulted um, Diego and then we found out that he assaulted Samantha and the way that they both were like, I thought he only liked girls or I thought he only liked boys. Um, I think what's really interesting that we didn't have the like, I'm afraid everyone thinks I'm gay story. 
which comes out usually in these, which is so interesting because I feel like that's such a, a comment on the time, right? Where in 2022, these young people are like, whatever, sexuality is fluid. That's not an issue. And I really appreciated that we didn't have that. Yeah, me too. I noticed that. But I was kind of um, surprised that we didn't do the whole, like, it's not about that. It's about power. It doesn't really matter like, sure. who you are. It's That's not what it comes down to it comes down to wanting to feel dominant over another person and having them feel like helpless so i mean we've said that a million times it's not like we like n needed it in this episode but i kind but of muncie like, doesn't know that's true yeah that's that's true. why i'm shocked that that didn't come up mm -hmm. yeah that like i would have expected her to be like isn't it odd that it would be somebody attacking both both these genders yeah. um and so i would have loved even just her being like, that's odd, no? And then Velasco, because he's essentially, you know, helping her. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was yeah. interesting. I noted that. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about the case or if we move on to our other segments. I mean, it was pretty straightforward. Like, at the end of the day, it was kind of like, okay. Yeah, I did appreciate, though, I will say this, when Daniela um, withdrew her complaint, was like, I'm not going to testify, the fact that they threatened him with witness tampering, I appreciated that because <laughs> as we were watching, my roommate was like, isn't this witness tampering? <laughs> Guys, he now knows the law as well as we do. I love that. Me too. <laughs> That's pretty cool law, baby. Absolutely. I have 24 seasons under my belt. Oh, I could practice law it's in more, the state of New York. It's more useful than a Hudson degree. That's true. <laughs> oh, Hudson. Um, all right. What else do I want to say? Best lines? Yeah, I can't wait to tell you one of them. Um, oh, Daryl said I like that Finn took the lead. Interesting. When did Finn take lead? I think that Finn, I mean, he took lead in helping Rollins. Let's talk about that for a second. Uh, yeah, because I think I mentioned, I don't know, we talked about it one week where I was like, oh, I really liked that relationship between Rollins yes. when she first got here. So I really like that we got to see that sort of echoed in this episode and show that that was like a, still a strong dynamic. I agree. I think the way that he like got her the way that like he presented the gift and like it re it totally reminded me of actually you talking about it. Yeah. So that was nice. Um, and the fact that it was helpful to her was even better because like, you know, not, not everything works for everybody. And so he like, you know, they were friends, they were partners. She yeah. got shot for him previously. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I think that I appreciate that we're setting mm -hmm. up where we're headed because there's the scene where she's helping um, Carisi and he says, you know, do you want to be a, a jury consultant? And she says um, that uh, maybe, you know, she it's a job where she won't get shot at. And I was like, oh, we're like really setting up that this is yeah. ending. And she's really on her way out, which is a bummer. Um, Daryl was saying, uh, I like that Finn did the initial interview. That is true. I did really appreciate the way he was talking to Diego. Yeah, I agree. I think they handled the, I think they all handled everything well in this episode, honestly, which is not always the case. Sometimes you're like, guys, but yeah, I think they all did solid job. Um, I totally agree. I I actually, I'm telling you, I think watch it a second time because I was bored the first time and liked it a lot better the second time. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't. There was something I hated about it. I was just like, okay, like send in the clowns, you know? It's You can't keep comparing everything to that. You're just going to be that's, disappointed. That's, that's just my shorthand for like winning an episode with a twist now. <laughs> the, this one had a little twist, which was nice. Oh, um, a treat. Oh. There's uh, the line where, where Finn says like that he bulked up. That was his armor. I was like, ooh, Finn, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, because this episode was, I mean, it was interesting and fun. And I can see this playing on a marathon on USA Network or ION or any other channel that I watch the marathons. Um, and it just being a nice 
good episode. Um, mm-hmm. Nothing special, nothing that super stands out, but it's a solid, solid episode. Yeah. All right, let's do best lines because I know you've got quite a few. Well, I have um, one. I just can't wait to perform for you. Oh, I hope I don't steal it. If you steal it, I'm going to be super mad, but I don't know that you will. Okay, I, I hope not. Um, so here are my lines. I have, give it a minute, because that one just made me laugh. What did you said? Pinsky says it when Diego's drowning. He like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally turns to Velasco and goes, give it a minute. I have decided that is how I will approach any conflict in the future. Yeah. Give, give it a minute. minute. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, give it a minute. Um, that one, and uh, I said, I already said I have no business being a lifeguard anyway. I can barely swim. Yeah, I like that one too. Okay, and then this is the line that I was like, this is my line. Oh no. I only became a lifeguard to pay my way through college and meet chicks. I had that one, but it's not the one I wanted to say. Oh, so good. Please. Because <clears throat> g- genuinely, considering becoming a lifeguard, everybody, to become, yeah. to meet chicks. All right, take it away, Taylor. Okay, we already said some of them. We talked about how at least, you know, Finn and Vincent don't make them swim laps. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, okay, so I have two more. I was his first love, I guess, now his last. <laughs> dark okay here's my favorite i'm gonna try to say it in the way he said it <laughs> wait let me make you let me let me oh let me god it. okay yeah yeah hold on hold on let's do it this way it was the this. funniest thing i've ever heard okay i'm ready you are a manipulative little big man with a fiefdom built on sand and it's all coming down <laughs> i said what is this you <laughs> manipulative little big man with a built on sand and it's all coming down <laughs> like there's so much I want to unpack <laughs> little big man let's start there little big man okay um, a fiefdom built on sand I think you're what? just Taylor, I think you're just jealous that you did not write any line as beautiful as that right, in one of your scripts. And I scripts. never will. And I never will. But I heard that and I said, that cannot be what was said. And I rebound. <laughs> and it was exactly what was said. And I am obsessed with it. Um, I hope that that, I want you to get that like on your wall and then it oh, inspires boy. your dialogue going forward. Or I'm a manipulative little big man. <laughs> Built on sand, and it's all coming down. I just <laughs> wow! I thought it was so good. Uh, um, Daryl in the chat says it feels like one of the writers in the room is generally <laughs> pissed at someone. Honestly, yeah, like there was so much venom oh. in that new merch question mark. <laughs> <laughs> that one no. Oh, come on. I only can give a lifeguard to pay my way through college and meet chicks. Meet chicks. That's a good one. That feels like something you'd find on a t-shirt if you vacation like in Florida and went to the souvenir shops. Right. With, like just I came all the way to Florida and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Yeah. I only became a lifeguard to pay my way through college and meet chicks. I'm obsessed. I loved that one too. I'm yeah. Yeah. There were um, some there were some good some gems in this. These episode. are great. Uh, Zach's in the chat says Creasy definitely had sass with that line. He is pulling Barba's left and right, and I love it. He is, but he all, it's also like a bit Shakespearean. Like part of it is really um, childish, like little big man. But then the future built on sand. It was giving Victorian literature. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> you love the combination of that juxtapose next. To yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good, beautiful, beautiful. Um. So, again, we said that this episode wasn't really... It didn't feel like it was ripped from any headline that I'd heard of. It felt like they maybe were loosely inspired by the um, horrific crimes done against the gymnasts, uh, the Olympic gymnasts. But it didn't get anywhere near where that was. So I I don't think it was inspired by that, but maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, But here on uh, S Review. I sit through organized crime so that you don't have to. And 
you're so fucking welcome. Thank you. I'm going to be honest. It's miserable. But I will say this. Um, Rollins crossed over onto organized crime this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that was relevant. It actually was the way that you would want a crossover to be done. Um, so she, like the case was, um, uh, with a couple of women were raped. And so Rollins called in Stabler for the case. And then she worked with the organized crime team. Okay. Uh, so like every time on mothership or organized crime that they have an assault, like a sexual assault, I'm always wondering why no one's calling SVU, which is even more funny because, um, The SVU episode this week literally started with a cop being like, I don't know, it seemed like something you guys should be called for. Yeah. So, um, anyway, it's almost like these shows are not consistent with who calls SVU and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, point being, um, I appreciated that. It would have been cool if Rollins got the call to go to the hospital on our show. So it tied in, but whatever, that's fine. I'm not going to complain. Um, anyway, point being, you don't have to sit through organized crime or Rollins was there and it was fun. Seeing her the rest of the episode was whatever. There. Um, what's going on over there? They started a whole new, they like were in the middle of their organized crime story. And then this one was, it felt like they were going back to an older story. And I was like, again, we're doing this, but no, they started a whole new thing. It's, you don't need to know. Okay. Um, for those who don't know, you can listen to us on iTunes and uh, Spotify and anywhere you listen to podcasts. And if you leave us a review on iTunes, we'll read it live on the air with an accent of sorts. Um, there are no new iTunes reviews, and that is a bummer. But if you want to leave us one, give us five stars if you like us, four stars if you don't. And if you don't like us, tell us why. It would be helpful. We and want if, to improve. And if you're wanting to push one through three for some reason, you simply can't. I don't know why. Weird. Yeah. Four is sufficient. Um, We get it. Four is we're not doing good. Five is we're doing great. Dun, dun. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, We also do a weekly poll. Yeah, Taylor, we what's happening with the poll? So last week I had a really lame poll and we discussed two episodes and I was like, which one's your favorite? And um, surprisingly, it was a 50-50 split. Um, it was well, incorrect. How the audience it was. Uh, six people <laughs> voted for Mirror Effect, and six people voted for the steps we cannot take. So there's that. This week is um, a much more creative poll. <laughs> um, and I want to know what your favorite water titled episode is. And let me tell you, there was like three that I had to leave out. There were so many of them. So if you have one that I didn't include, go ahead and comment below. But the one that I picked. Question. Mm-hmm. the poll is about the water titled episode so like which of yeah. these episodes is your favorite it has a title that has water in it yeah. not this episode is about water correct okay just clarifying, yeah. I, just clarifying. I don't know i thought it would be fun <laughs> i know i i think that is fun i just wanted to clarify what the poll sure. is the poll is which of these is your favorite episode all of these have water in the title yeah like Got it. It. so you'll you'll get it once i say <laughs> there's storm Season seven, episode 10. That's a Kiki Palmer episode. Oh, that's a great episode. Um, Honestly, all these are good. And like I said, I left them out that I was like, eh, I wanted one from like, you know, kind of. That each. one then turns into an anthrax episode. I believe so, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Episode. Um, we have Wet, season 12, episode five. An absolute freaking classic. I didn't stab the captain with a pickle. It has David uh, Kramaholtz in it. That's a great one. That's um, Bernard from the Santa Claus movie. <laughs> nice. We have Swimming with Sharks. That's season 21 episode, or season, yeah, 21 episode of 15. I think this was like a girl boss episode, if I'm not mistaken, but I kind of don't remember it well. Um, let me look it up real fast for y'all. Yeah. Um, a woman accuses her business partner of rape, which leads to an investigation into her company's practices. This isn't the B... Uh, one with the vibrators, is it? It might be actually. It's like she ran like a female CEO of a wellness company. Yeah, it was, it was like a, 
with it was cat there am i mixing up episodes no i think you're right because that would have been around the time all i remember i literally was just like this is the girl boss episode <laughs> hold on this is gonna kill me the girl boss episode yes cat's there okay <laughs> There's also a show called Swimming with Sharks. Oh, yes. It's the, the one with the, like, gaslighting. Yes. We Be Well was the name of the company. Yes. It was, like, bee yes. themed and then Cat buys a vibrator for her sister. Um, I don't think that's the only detail. <laughs> it's a, it was a very important detail. Of, no, you're right. And I loved this episode. Um, you loved this episode. And you can check out the... Um, Discussion for that, I believe, February 2020. Oh, it may not be on S Review. It might be. Oh, wait, February 2020. No, I think it might not be on S Review. It might be on the previous network. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Have fun. Yes. And if I said something offensive, well, I probably did. All right, go on. Um, and then this one, we just talked about a Breakwater, season 24, episode 5. I don't know what I'd choose, honestly. I think all these are really good. Every time you do a poll like this, all I want to do is re-watch all the episodes listed. Yeah, they're all solid. Yeah. Um, I mean, because, like, you have so many highlights in these ones. Kiki Palmer, hello, legend. It also, um, the the villain in that episode the bad guy is from grim um is russell hornsby and so and that's like a katrina episode it was yeah. really timely um and then wet oh, is just like hello that's like a hall of fame line really Swing is sucks. girl boss we be well vibrator like hi <laughs> all the us words that matter and then this one is we just guess that we liked it oh man um this one definitely I would say is my least favorite of the grouping. Well, I don't know. The the storm one is re- this is really hard, guys. This is hard, it's and strong, I'm glad you all. Strong group of episodes. Any yeah. other time, this episode could be much higher, but these are just all really good episodes. Maybe y'all should just uh, start naming all of your episodes after water. <laughs> <laughs> I think this episode really should have been just called Baywatch, but whatever. Um, Okay, what else do we do here? Uh, oh, it's time for... Oh, we'll tell you where to find the poll in just a bit. But it's time for... What did we learn? I learned that mm. being a lifeguard is a big deal when you're doing it for a place like this. Um, and all the time. I'm like, listen, I always appreciated lifeguards. I'm just saying I had a bunch of friends who were lifeguards in high school, and I wouldn't say they were the most responsible, like, hard work. I, I love them, but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? But, um, I don't think I could do it. I think I'd be really stressed out. I think, I mean, I. To be fair, like I'm thinking of when I was around a lifeguard and that was definitely like when I went to summer camp as a kid and the summer camp, like the lifeguards were just like the best swimmers yeah, who, who were adults or were like teens. Um, I don't know that it was necessarily that they had any special skills. Maybe they had CPR training, which makes sense. Um, yeah, you did. I, I think you definitely have to have CPR training. Right. I mean, I have to have CPR training for Sunday school, but like. I don't have to, but I have been trained before to mm. go to the staying alive song. That's the one. Um, so I learned, uh, one, that as of de- end of December of this year, um, minimum wage in New York will become 1420. Um, and I also learned that the lifeguards at the beach are part of the parks and recreation department in the government. And so, like, it's actually a thing. It's like a government job. Yeah, um, and you guys all just learned how to do CPR from me just doing that. That's that's how you do compressions. That is only part of CPR. Well, the other part is you clasp the nose and you breathe into it. The mouth. Anyway, <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, so that's what we learned. <laughs> if you learned something and you're in our live chat, let us know. Please. Um, did you learn? I that learned we- that it's a fiefdom built on sand and it's all coming down. <laughs> I learned that we had two repeat offenders and that one of which has been playing in his early 20s since he was in his early 20s. I love that. Um, I, I wish him so much luck. 
Uh, before we wrap it up, some announcements. Um, as you know, we are live here every Sunday. Uh, if you're watching us live, we love that. We love having you here and part of our discussion. Um, if you're not watching us live, we love that you'll still watch us later or listen to us on uh, audio version. If you're on Spotify, you can see us in addition to listening. Um, and I'm sorry if you don't like that, that you can see us. You should yep. love it. You should love it. But I'm if you don't like it. We're wearing bikinis this week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm actually really bummed that you did not text me to do I that. I knew that you would go for it, which is why I didn't say anything. <laughs> of course I would. I love an excuse to dress up. Um, okay, other announcements. Uh, I already told you about leaving us comments on iTunes. Um, and uh, also we sell merch. Uh, it's ridiculous and we do it for funsies. And you can find the link in the description below, either on YouTube or the podcast, mm -hmm. wherever you're checking us out. It's definitely listed there. Uh, Daryl is asking, are there any more show breaks coming up for SVU? Mm -hmm. I know that there's a new episode next week. Um, unfortunately, the schedule is not like released it's really like a week to week we guess uh when it's coming back or it's taking a break um there will be a break probably at the end of november because of thanksgiving yeah. um because the show airs on thursdays so definitely that week um and then we will take breaks as our schedules uh call for so really the only way to know if there's a new episode of us is to be subscribed to the channel yeah. because uh, I'm using Twitter, Twitter, less and less, less and less on the Twitters. Um, yep. So the only real way to know if there's going to be an episode is to subscribe to the channel here or wherever you're listening to us because the episodes will be released. Um, and there's always the link. If you subscribe to us, you'll always be able to see it ahead of time on YouTube for sure. Okay. Um, I think that's everything. I want to make sure everyone has the hotline in case you need it. Just again, it is 1-800-656-4673. 1-800-656-4673. Uh, it is toll free. You can reach out to Rain online and talk to them anonymously if you need to. We're doing a good service here. Okay. Uh, Felicia's not here with us today, but you can find her on Instagram at it's Felicia Michelle. Taylor, where can everyone find you and the poll? You can find me and the poll on Twitter at Alphabet underscore and you can also find me on Instagram at Taylor underscore Gates underscore um, and check out my Halloween costume. Okay, I will. Um, I am Yell Teagle. I'm everywhere at Yell Teagle. That is why A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. -E -E you can find me on Sundays here talking about SVU. You can find me rest of the week. Well, no longer tweeting, but talking about SVU. So find me on Instagram at Yell Teagle. Um, I'll make all my announcements there from now on. Life's weird. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We loved having you here. See you next time. Bye. Ooh, a kiss.